What is up everyone, Tay here, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about Guardians Volume 2 and how it relates to Guardians Volume 3 and Avengers Infinity War. So we will be talking about spoilers, so this is your official spoiler warning. Anyway, so I've talked about Guardians Volume 2 in several videos in the months leading up to its release, and in this vid I wanted to talk about a lot of the common comments and questions I've seen in the comments section of those videos, especially the ones pertaining to Adam Warlock. But first, there's a handful of interview clips from James Gunn and the Russo brothers that I've edited together that will pertain to some of what we're talking about, especially uh, such as people asking about Adam Warlock being in Avengers 4 and Scarlet Witch and Vision's role in Avengers 4 and Infinity War. So I'll let those play and then we will come back to it in a moment. I mean, I think that, well, first of all, as an executive producer, I have to look over the entire movie of Infinity, the two movies of sure. Infinity War and take care of them, make sure they're the best possible stories they can be. Well, I mean, you know, I made a mistake in the first one because I put something that looks like uh, Adam Warlock's cocoon in the collector's museum, which, you know, for me at the time, I was just kind of making up fun stuff to put in the collector's museum. And uh, I didn't know how seriously people were going to take the Easter eggs. So, um, yeah, I, I love Adam Warlock. He's really one of my, my favorite characters. Back I think we can expect to see Adam Warlock in the future of the cosmic universe. It'll be after Infinity Wars, which I think is good for people to know. But, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll come and he'll be part of the cosmic universe afterwards. I mean, I think, look, at by the time we get to Infinity War, there's so much to do. There's so much to do to service the characters that exist, that currently exist or will soon exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that our focus is going to be on those characters uh, and uh, in advancing the story of those characters. Uh, and I think that, that that alone is sufficient scale for those movies. Um, so I don't, know, I don't know how much time we'll spend uh, um, with, uh, with the Easter egging other characters. Okay, so we all saw the real Adam Warlock cocoon at the end of Guardians Volume 2, and that both Kevin Feige and James Gunn have both confirmed on several occasions that Adam Warlock will be introduced in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and won't be in Infinity War, which has had many fans going, well, he's not in Infinity War, but what about Avengers 4? Yeah, maybe. Well, we heard the Russo brothers say in that interview that they really have their hands full with the entirety of the main MCU cast with Infinity War, and that these next two Avengers films will be about the culmination of all the past MCU films up to that point, and that they aren't planning on introducing or easter egging any new big characters. They will be putting Captain Marvel in Infinity War in a small role, and then she will have her solo film coming out between Infinity War and Avengers 4, but I think they mean no new unannounced big characters. And Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige has recently said the same thing, as well as James Gunn. And you hear in those clips when talking about Infinity War, they are pluralizing, and even though they are speaking about Infinity War, they are all still referencing the two movies as a pair. And those interviews are all pretty recent. The James Gunn interviews are from about a week ago, and the Russo Brothers one is from a few months ago. So unfortunately, it sounds like Adam Warlock won't be in Avengers 4, but we'll get him in Guardians Volume 3, which Gunn confirmed will come out after both Avengers films and will kick off the Marvel Cosmic Universe, with Adam Warlock being one of the big key characters in the MCU after Phase 3. Another comment I've commonly seen with all of the Adam Warlock talk after Guardians 2 and the post credit scene is, what's the point of putting Adam Warlock in the MCU if it's after the Infinity Saga, and how are the Avengers going to beat Thanos without Adam Warlock? Well, there's a bunch of great Adam Warlock stories that Jim Starlin wrote besides Infinity Gauntlet that Marvel Studios could take from for future cosmic MCU films. And as for how Thanos will be defeated, there's really so many paths the Infinity War screenwriters Marcus and McFeely could take for the Avengers to put their brains together and defeat Thanos. Now, how it went down in the Infinity Gauntlet comic was... Well, let me back up a little. Okay, the, the Gauntlet series came out in 1991, but Adam Warlock has a long history before that. 
He was even killed at a certain point, then revived after he had a run-in with Thor because Adam wanted to hook up with Sif. Then afterwards, Adam was brought back to life and went under the mentorship of the High Evolutionary. And it was with the High Evolutionary that he became a hero and came into the possession of the Soul Gem. And before the events of Infinity Gauntlet, Adam had a long history of battling with Thanos. So when Thanos gets all of the Infinity Stones, he feels a bit of guilt and responsibility. And even though Adam no longer has the Soul Stone in his head, he still has a connection with it, and in the end of Infinity Gauntlet, he's able to use that connection to defeat Thanos. And I think we could see a somewhat similar scenario in, in the Infinity Saga, but with Scarlet Witch and Vision. I don't think we've seen her really scratch the surface yet of her power. She's a, she is an extremely powerful character, and I think um, she's a very important character moving forward, let's just say that. But we, yeah, but we, look, at we, because she, her power is so intense, you know, we look for ways to make her vulnerable and, uh, and make her powers vulnerable, and sometimes you go through emotional channels to do that. Vision is another <laughs> character who, uh, who I, I don't think is, has realized his power yet. And I think his, uh, his, uh, his feelings for a certain character in that film uh, um, complicate his powers as well. And, uh, and you know, I think, frankly, he, he willingly takes a, a back seat in some events in the movie because, um, because he's so powerful that, you know, there's not, you know, it's going to blast somebody with, the, with his, his, his mind ray. Um, uh, you know, he'd kill them. So it's not, you know, I think when he faces a true threat, uh, I think you'll see uh, what, what he can do. Vision wants to understand humanity. And I think in that process of him trying to understand humanity, he becomes more human. And that's very, very much the arc, I think, that he goes on in, in Civil War. And he, I think he will continue down that road. And Tony ultimately realizes by bringing Vision to life, he actually will have something great. And it's that combination of the vibranium they put in Division, the lightning that Thor puts in Division, and Tony's genius and intellect that he puts in Division that ultimately brings Vision to life and makes him this pure being. Now, I talked about this in one of my older videos about some of the similarities between Adam Warlock in the Marvel comics and Vision in the Marvel films. And a lot of my opinions on how Vision will be used in the Infinity Saga have changed since I made that video. And recently, some set pictures from Infinity War with Vision and Scarlet Witch came out online, and I'm going to talk about those pictures, so beware of pretty minor spoilers for Infinity War ahead. So, in Infinity Gauntlet, Thanos kills Vision, and with Vision having the Mind Stone in the MCU on top of Thanos killing him in the comics, many believe that he would likely die in Infinity War, and I myself thought this was a good possibility, but I also believe that he would probably be brought back to life at some point in the two films as well. Then, not too long ago, we started seeing set photos of the onset battle from Infinity War with Vision, Scarlet Witch, and the mocap actors playing the Black Order. Order. And this is most likely the portion of the film where Vision loses the Mind Stone. And then a little while later, more photos came out showing Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen, aka Vision and Scarlet Witch, while shooting an intimate scene uh, next to a window, a rain-soaked window. But Vision looks to be normal, a human being, so of course this sparked many theories. Is this what happens to Vision without the Mind Stone? He reverts to a normal person with no powers. Does he still have powers, but is not as powerful as he was with the stone in his head? Could it be a dream sequence from Vision or Scarlet Witch dreaming of a normal life together? And I think it could be that this is Vision and what he looks like after he loses the Mind Stone, and that he hasn't lost all of his powers, but he is in a depleted and weakened state. He's probably feeling helpless and a great deal of guilt, as if he didn't lose the Mind Stone, then Thanos wouldn't be able to use the full power of the Gauntlet, and I suspect that Wanda will try to help him learn how to use his powers, as her powers also came from the Mind Stone. And by doing this, it will both lift Vision out of his destitute state, and that Wanda and Vision's relationship will also have an enlightening effect on her as well. And throughout the two Avengers films, you will see the full gamut of the destruction and rebirth of these two characters. You know, it's a common plot thread in movies and comic books, and I think it's possible we'll see an Infinity War where early on they will suffer a caustic defeat, 
fall into despair only to you know rise from the ashes if you will and overcome and be the essential component in the end in defeating Thanos in Avengers 4 and how they are essential to defeating Thanos will probably have to do with their connection to the Mind Stone, similarly to how Adam Warlock was the key component and character to defeat Thanos in the Infinity Gauntlet comics due to his connection with the Soul Stone, only theirs will be a connection with the Mind Stone. And when Kevin Feige, the Russo brothers, and James Gunn say that Adam Warlock won't be in Avengers Infinity War, I don't think they're being cheeky or lying. I think they're telling the truth. And when they say that, I think they're referring to both of the upcoming Avengers films. Look over the entire movie of Infinity the two movies of. And the last thing on Adam Warlock regarding his appearance in future MCU films is this quote by Kevin Feige saying, Adam is not in Infinity War. That is not a tag for Infinity War. Adam's always been top of mind for the Guardians franchise. And if he appears anywhere in the future, it'll be in Guardians. And that quote was from two days ago, so I just thought I'd throw that in there as well. Anyway, I went deep on this because it was one of the most common questions and topics in the comments and on Twitter, and I just wanted to make sure I was very thorough. And Feige and Gunn have said Guardians Volume 3 will kick off the new cosmic MCU, and from Gunn's comments, it sounds like Adam Warlock will be one of the next big main characters in that next phase of Marvel movies. So I guess we'll just have to wait and be patient, and we'll get him eventually. And one more thing, very lastly, I swear, I recently did my Guardians 2 Easter Eggs video, and in it I said I really liked the movie, but I was disappointed we didn't see interactions with Ego as a planet with a face on it. And I got many, 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 many comments saying, we did see a planet with a face on it, and how could you have missed it? And since then I actually saw the film again, and I think I missed it the first time because I blinked. No, I'm just kidding. I know it was on there for a few seconds, but it still wasn't very long, and I don't know how I missed it the first time. One of the pre-screens I saw was in 3D, and I kept having to mess with my glasses because the air stems were crooked, so they kept sitting crooked on my face. But I did see it this time, and I'm glad it was in there. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching, everyone. You guys are awesome. I will be doing a Flash video coming up for those of you who have been asking. Check out the newest concept art video showing the art and alternate character designs for Captain America Civil War. There's a cool piece in there that shows Captain America and what he would have looked like without his Captain uniform, you know, after what he would have looked like, presumably, at the end of the film. So check that out, got other videos coming up and sh they will be coming out more consistently. I know it's been a little slow this past week or so, but uh, been super busy, but I'm back to it. So look out for all that, like, subscribe, all of that, and I will be back soon.